go downstairs and open the motel. What do you expect us to live on, Hope? After 22 years inside a mental institution for his crimes, Norman Bates is being released and deemed cured of his split personality. A petition is presented by the sister of one of his victims signed by hundreds of local townspeople all wanting him to remain locked up. Despite this the judge refuses to acknowledge Lila's request so she vows to see Norman pay. Then when it's all over confronts psychiatrist Dr. Raymond outside putting everything on him should Norman relapse. Raymond takes the now free man to his home situated behind the Bates Motel where his victims were all chosen. The car parked outside belongs to the new owner though he's neglected it into its current state. Walking up the hill Norman sees someone in his mother's bedroom but is told no one's lived in the house for years. Norman insists on living back at home but is nervous that the memories could bring back trauma, however the caring doctor says he will come by from time to time to check on him, and stands by his words showing confidence in Norman's rehabilitation. The moment Raymond leaves, Norman finds a note from mother and hears her voice from the bedroom. Then a hand drops to the floor and the door slams showing his first signs of possible relapse. At noon Norman goes to a diner where the courts arranged for him to work as a short order cook. He introduces himself to the manager Emma, then is taken into the kitchen to meet the owner Ralph. His co-workers include the irritable Myrna and the new girl Mary who started at the diner just four days ago. She sucks at her job and knocks pie all over the floor but Norman covers for her with Ralph. When the shift is over Norman hears Mary arguing on the payphone so he questions her on it. She claims that she's been kicked out of her house by her boyfriend so Norman offers her a place to stay. They get back to the motel and enter the parlor, when just out of habit Norman almost checks her into the murder cabin but instead decides to put her up in the house. The current manager Warren enters and is surprised to see Mary with someone like Bates. Norman tells Mary to wait for him outside and then questions Warren about running the motel like a crack house in his absence. Without listening to his excuses, he fires the sleaze and walks up to the mansion having murderer and psycho shouted at him the entire way. Once inside Norman makes a sandwich for Mary while she argues on the phone. He glances at the rat poison before going back to making it, but the sight of a knife startles him so he pretends it doesn't exist. Mary finds it and hands it to Norman when remembering that he was institutionalized and seeing his handling of the knife, loses her appetite and attempts to leave. Since it was his other personality that did the killings, Norman can only confess to what he knows and says that he poisoned his mother when he was 12, but he's all better now. Telling her that he's afraid of being in the house alone, Mary decides to stay and is taken upstairs but unknowingly walks into Norman's mother's room. Due to the bad history and the furniture all covered up with sheets he puts her up in his old room instead. He says goodnight and spends the rest of it downstairs, while Mary wisely uses a chair stuck under the doorknob for security. The next morning Mary comes into work late, saying to Norman that she left in the middle of the night to stay with a friend. As he slices lettuce Warren enters drunk and mockingly inquires to Ralph about Norman's performance. He sits down and starts to harass Mary asking what it's like to sleep with a psycho, while a note written by mother makes its way around to Norman amongst the orders. Assuming it's more of the drunk's harassments he storms out of the kitchen giving Warren what he wants. Norman's encouraged by him to pick up a nearby knife and use it, but he composes himself and walks away. In the kitchen there's no signs of the note anywhere so everyone thinks he was just imagining it, but Norman's convinced it was real. Later that night, Mary returns and has reconsidered staying with him. She goes upstairs to take a shower while Norman washes up, and is shown to be watched bathing through a peephole cut into the wall. After having a funny feeling she goes outside and finds Norman downstairs playing the piano in the living room. Suddenly a loud car horn is heard from the motel, as Warren's returned drunk yet again and is shouting psycho while packing up his things. The phone rings so Norman answers it, but it's someone pretending to be his dead mother so he slams it down assuming it's Warren. As Warren fumbles around, what looks like a woman enters and attacks him with a knife. The next morning Raymond visits Norman who tells him he's decided to dedicate himself to the motel full time. He tells him about the notes and phone calls which Raymond agrees to look into, then sees someone in the attic of the house who Norman says is Mary, but she's shown in the bathroom currently putting on makeup. She notices the peephole in the wall that leads into mother's bedroom so she leaves the house disturbed. She introduces herself to the doctor for the first time and gets a lift with him into town while Norman continues to renovate. Raymond goes to the nearby police station and tells Sheriff Hunt about the prank calls. Without any evidence of a crime being committed he's unwilling to put a wiretap on the phone but agrees to look into Mary. At the motel Norman sees a figure of his mother standing in her bedroom and walks up to the house beginning to question his sanity. He enters mother's bedroom and finds it looks exactly as it did 22 years ago all clean and tidy, with another lovely note. A sound lures him into the attic where he finds the place empty of any persons, but is suddenly locked inside. While he's up there two teenagers sneak into the basement to begin fooling around when they hear a noise. The person in mother's dress enters and catches the boy before he can escape with the girl, stabbing him to death as she gets away. 
Mary finds Norman sleeping in the attic but when he races to his mother's room it's now covered up. A few minutes later a knock signals the police's arrival as they've come to question Norman on the missing teenager. They investigate the fruit cellar and find it suspiciously clean but Norman claims not to have entered it in 22 years, so Mary lies and says she cleaned it herself and spent the entire afternoon with him as an alibi. When they're about to leave, Hunt tells Mary about Norman digging up his mother's corpse and keeping it in the cellar in hopes that it will coerce her into talking, but she gives them nothing. That night while Norman's devastated assuming that he's losing his mind again, Mary goes down to the motel in search of any stress relief that Warren might have left behind, when Lila is revealed to be Mary's mother. She's the one who's been calling Norman while Mary's been helping her by dressing up and parading around. Mary regrets what she's been doing as she's developed feelings for Norman, and knows he couldn't have killed the boy as she is the one who locked him in the attic, while Lila doesn't care and just wants to see him pay. Up at the house, the toilet begins to overflow with blood as if it's a hallucination when Mary gets back and finds it's real. Norman is convinced that he's responsible for killing the boy and cleaning up the evidence but Mary knows it couldn't have been him. While cleaning up she hears someone looking through the peephole and calls out to Norman but he's downstairs, so takes her handbag gun and searches the room. When looking through the hole into the bathroom herself an eyeball startles Mary, but the two search the entire house and find no one. That night Norman spends the night in Mary's room to keep them both safe, but she wakes up with him standing over her knife in hand. He tells her he knows his mother is still alive but Mary still doesn't tell him what she has been doing and just comforts him. The next day Raymond comes to the house as he has discovered Mary's true identity, he breaks the bad news about her betrayal but Norman is still convinced that it's his mother, so the doctor takes him to have her body exhumed to prove that she is still dead. Mary goes to Lila's hotel and tells her to stop bothering Norman but the mother claims to have no clue about certain events. She accuses her daughter of being in love with a psychopath and is convinced that she can hear in Norman's voice on the phone that he's about to crack. Later when Norman confronts Mary the phone rings, and although assuming it's Lila Norman's tone changes believing it's his mother again. Not hearing anyone else on the other end Mary picks up an extension and tells him to put the phone down thinking him going insane, but Lila's shown to have just hung up. Mary admits to Norman about her part in the deception when the police suddenly turn up to question them. They take the two to the swamp out back of the motel where Warren's car has been found but the two have no answers. Norman's let go while Hunt wants to question Mary, just as Lila goes to the hotel in the hopes of one final push over the edge. Dr. Raymond follows her and watches as she sneaks into the empty house and enters the fruit cellar revealing a hidden mother costume, when she's suddenly attacked by another mother and instantly killed. Raymond enters the house and goes into the cellar but there's no sign of Lila or any kind of struggle, just the loose stone a pile of coal and the hatch to the outside that's always left open. Norman gets back and finds the doctor but doesn't believe him about Lila and instead tells him about his mother's return, so Raymond leaves to find Lila to prove to him that he's not going crazy. Meanwhile the sheriff finds Warren's body stuffed into the trunk of his car so Mary leaves to warn Norman. She tries to convince him to leave town thinking that she drove him to do the murders, but he's sure it's his real mother and answers another phone call. It's Raymond on the other end calling from the motel but Norman begins talking back as if it's his mother. When he starts arguing with imaginary mother about killing Mary, she freaks out and rushes to the cellar to put on the mother costume. Confronting him in it he refuses to acknowledge her so she jumps on the extension and tells him to hang up. Hearing him arguing with a dial tone, Mary breaks down realizing she's turned him completely insane, when Raymond startles her from behind and she stabs him. The good doctor falls to his death, but a worried-looking Norman just promises Mary that he'll cover up the murder and calls her mother. When he reaches for her she pulls the knife out to protect herself and begins slashing and stabbing at Norman, while backing all the way down the stairs and into the cellar. He continues forward telling mother that it's going to be okay when stumbling on a pile of coal revealing Lila. Realizing that Norman was the murderer the entire time, she attempts to kill him but police enter and shoot her dead. With Mary and Lila both dead everyone just believes the two killed in an attempt to frame Norman, then Mary dressed up as mother to kill Lila and Raymond when she went completely mad. Sheriff Hunt releases a far from innocent Norman where he returns to his mundane life at the quiet Bates Motel. A short time later a visitor comes to the front door in the form of the diner manager. Over a cup of tea Emma claims that she's his real mother and was doing the killings of anyone who tormented him. She gave him up to be raised by her sister and was only released from an institute herself after the events of the first movie. Just then she gags on her tea having been poisoned by Norman as he suddenly bludgeons her with a shovel. He picks up her body and carries her upstairs to his mother's room, when the familiar voice of his mother returns and warns Norman not to mess around with any more filthy girls. The Bates Motel's reopen for business as Norman waits for some new guests to arrive, as mother watches from her bedroom. And the movie ends. Why did you do that? I'm the only one who loves you. So you made it. I appreciate your time. 
I couldn't have done it without you. Tell your mother I said thanks. Only your mother truly loves you.